jump into part C, your, your final year. So talk us through your experience um, generally in terms of the final year, uh, things that you enjoy, the challenges encountered. Then from there we'll go, we'll talk a little bit about your final year project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, final year started full on in COVID. So that was... Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> remember yeah, the year yeah. before us went, you know, they were mid year when COVID started, and my final year started, uh, when was it 2020? Yes, September 2020. Um, and it was the first time that we were going in university, which was full on. Yes, you're coming in person for a lot of the subjects because it's a practical course. However, you know, with all the masks, everyone being afraid, a lot of them not being afraid. Um, I had my own fears. I went into placement here where I was teaching. So I didn't really, you know, obviously I got experience, but I didn't get that industry experience. That is what mm -hmm. helps a lot of students in their final year project. So yeah. I didn't have a clear mindset of, okay, this is what I've been thinking of for a year. You know, I haven't, I haven't discussed anything with my colleagues. I didn't have any colleagues. Um, you know, that situation that we discussed, the products that we designed. No, we discussed the subject, the topic that we were teaching. So it was, um, a strong start in the beginning they did I, I think they would we did a kickstarter basically where we had to come up with three ideas oh my god I was still in Cyprus when I was doing that I uh, arrived a bit late um, to uni in that final year you know just to ease up the travel um, you know the numbers of people traveling and yeah, well, after a lot of thinking at, uh, thinking at home, you know, some ideas from my sister, my mom, you know, a lot of thinking, I um, came up with the idea of a disinfection, uh, disinfecting product that I was actually seeing around happening, not in Cyprus, they're not the highest tech um, area, but I was seeing things happening online, you know, with UV light and things like that. So that started appearing in my idea slowly. Um, so when I came to Lafra after the Kickstarter as well, uh, I carried on with that idea. And the whole year was just looking back at it. It just, it ended so quickly and so slowly at the same time. So there were times that I'm like, this is not, going to end ever and then it was like okay when did this finish when did that area have to be covered um it was great we had a lot of help from all the lecturers it was really exciting to actually meet so many lecturers that i'd seen in the design school and i never knew what they were doing you know we suddenly got a list of people that were like this is what they actually do they are professionals so do seek out their help and you know talking to them a bit more discussion in um you know in the groups that we had which was great i think in some cases it was really helpful to see that we were getting motivation from each other it was a challenging time we weren't doing anything in person but just showing that slide that we worked on or a couple of slides or whatever that we'd done during the week was really helpful uh, helpful to um, either get insight from others or obviously from the lecturer who was um, who was guiding us for me it was Iki mm -hmm. uh, from mechanics and um, or just while discussing it while saying it out loud ideas coming to my mind which really helped me I'm, I realized that I'm a person who needs to say things out loud to realize how they can be challenging uh, or helpful and it was also it, it was a shame that a lot of the subjects, a lot of the modules actually were didn't manage to complete, you know. Uh, for example, uh, the, um, I want to say electromechanics, mm -hmm. but, you know, the final year combined uh, module of mechanics and electronics. Um, we never managed to make the machine. We didn't have that experience that other years have had, um, which you could see also in many students who were slowly reducing the amount of technical stuff that they had in their projects. 
um, but still, even through that, those challenges and everything, I remember um, all the video calls that I used to do with my course mates to study mm -hmm. or to practice the past papers that we did for the January exam. And it was a big time of not having a lot of contact with many people and having extreme you know, bonding with others mm -hmm. that were close to you and managing to go through uh, the project was, you know, so fulfilling in the end, saying that, oh my God, I've made something and an actual working prototype. It was just so exciting at some point. Yeah, very challenging, <laughs> very difficult. Yeah, that's, that's the unfortunate thing with, uh, regarding COVID. Uh, it, it kind of marred um, the process and the opportunity for students to do something hands-on in terms of realizing something from paper to its physical form. Um, but unfortunately, those are the cards that we're dealt with. So, <laughs> but at least it's more about the journey. It's more about having that experience to set you up nicely for FIDP. So mm -hmm. FIDP stands for final year um, pro uh, yeah. product design. Wrong. Wrong. Let's, let's talk about your project. And I'm much more interested in your design philosophy or your design thinking. Because there are a lot of models out there. Uh, and that's, uh, what I tend to tell students is that nothing is prescribed in stone. It all comes down to what makes sense to you in terms of you understanding how you need to go about using your research based on the problem that you've defined to establish some form of functional product. So from your perspective, what is your own philosophy when it comes to thinking, your thinking when it comes to um, design? And you can relate to anything, you can relate it to your um, final year project. Mm -hmm. So, um... All along, um, you know, even from my GCSEs and my A levels, that was basically my only experience uh, for design and technology um, before uni. I have realized that I do really look into users. So I've not really been a person to, you know, oh, I've had a great hobby and I wanted to make a gadget for it or make something for it. I've always tried to solve problems that users have so i remember even um for my gcses and my a levels i worked a lot on trying to improve the walkers for elderly having had that experience in my background so um later on you know for my second year project that we had a bit more of um, we had to create the brief basically i had i was going through um a time where I had a lot of skin acne so that have affected me a lot so I saw that other people were going through that stressful period um, like that so I created a digital meter that would help through that so I've always found inspiration from the users and that is then followed with a lot of rigorous um, research in market to see what's available what they're doing what they're not doing is there an opportunity to fix something that exists or the developing. So I do I do think that also the way that I was taught at LAFRA really influenced me. You know, I really go from the research to a little bit of ideation, testing, then going back to research, then back to ideation until I go to the final um, idea. Then you have a lot more prototyping, a lot more hands-on experience and things like that. And that's what I did for my final year project as well, where I had... Um, the my design basically consisted of um, a UV disinfecting device of small personal items. And the main idea actually came from the planet suffering from all the medical waste that we had, you know, the masks being damped and not being um, thrown away properly. You know, they always advise to remove the elastic uh, bands so that the birds don't get caught on it. And you do regularly see it on the news, or if you want to look online, you can see that that's really affected wildlife. 
and also the way that the users aren't properly using their masks. So then the solution that they came up with was the, um, you know, the fabric masks, but people didn't really disinfect it every, after every single use. You're, you technically should be using it only for three, four hours and then washing it or just disinfecting it before you reuse it. People weren't doing that. May that be laziness, a bit of a hustle, you know, every now and then, you know, every time that you go out, you have to wear it, wash it, rewear, wash it. So that was becoming a bit of a thing. So again, having seen that problem that was happening and COVID not going away, we do see it a year after, it's still not going away. So a product like that for me had a lot of potential. Mm -hmm and quite current as well. Like it was constantly in my environment. So I found a lot of inspiration from that. And then obviously quite a lot of uh, sketching, ideation, testing, a lot of 3D modeling, which is a great thing that I've got from Lapra that my cat skills, you know, they were not existent before Lapra. I, did, I, I just knew about CAD through books what the syllabus said for um, GCSE or A-levels. But then I got the hands-on experience of what to do with a uh, with a CAD basically. And it was so exciting and so refreshing to see that perspective that, oh, from nothing you can create something and show people around the world. So a lot of CAD and then onto the electronics testing that although I'd done electronics earlier on, it was very challenging because there was a lot of coding that I usually try to avoid. <laughs> Group projects, I would try to make the practical side of stuff and the emotional support, you can do this. And Isn't I would love to. You the, more the mechanical elements, I suppose. Yes, so the practical, that's what, mechanics is more my side of things, you know, how things would work, the hinges that would go in place or the things that would help to open and close the doors. Mm -hmm that was more me so basically in my head I had everything about how it would open and close because I thought about you know the push uh, to open latches or um, the hinges that would go in place and then the electronics and the coding was just the most daunting part so that took that just a lot of time big thanks to Rohan Kaka they who really helped me through that process as well so yeah um yeah kind of that's it a lot of research in the beginning to see what's the problem who's affected by it and you know what they're now trying to teach students in schools is like there's a lot of sta stakeholders and that's a word that is slowly starting to get into the books the stakeholder opinion and having looked back that's what i've done basically from nature to people to the scientists who were in the project to the mask wearers, non-mask wearers, all of those, how could it help people? And why would a disinfecting device be useful not only for masks, but for other things? Oh, we go outside, we disinfect our hands when we come back home, but you touched your phone when you were in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. What about the phone? What happens there? You're going to put it back on your face. There you go, all the bacteria. I'm not talking only about COVID, I'm talking about all the bacteria that are out there. Mm -hmm. So um it really helped me kind of create this well-rounded idea of a product and then obviously i think i think it, it, it's very interesting because the first thing that you mentioned was you know the focus being on the user and i think that's something that a lot of um, students tend to ignore because mm -hmm. at the end of the day uh, yes you can design a product with good functionality exceptional performance but if the product fails to engage the user or the user has difficulty using the product, then that's a very big issue because at the end of the day, you're designing towards someone, towards an end user. So that, that's quite important. Also like the fact that you also emphasized the point of the process not being linear. It's quite non-linear. So that's, that's quite, quite interesting. And, Good to, to share with us.
Thank you.